What's up guys, my name is DJ Swivel and on this week's episode of Just The Tips, we're gonna be breaking down my brand new plugin, BDE. It's a distortion, it's incredible, but before we get started, make sure you like, subscribe, comment, do what you gotta do, and let's dig into BDE. What's up guys, my name is DJ Swivel and on this very special episode of Just The Tips, uh, I'm going to be breaking down my brand new plugin BDE. Uh, it just came out a few days ago and I'm really, really, really excited about it. Um, I've been working on this plugin for a long time. Uh, and it was something that I've wanted to do forever. Um, I love using distortion plugins, uh, and there's a lot of great ones out there, but every single distortion that I've ever used has always left me wanting more. There's always been something about it that just didn't quite work the way that I personally wanted. And so I thought I can beat those, I can build something better, uh, why don't we go ahead and do that? And I think I've done just that. And so today's episode of Just The Tips, we're gonna do a full walkthrough. I'm gonna show you what everything does. I'm gonna give you a couple audio examples and then I really encourage you guys to go to djswivel.com, download the free trial, uh, mess with it, uh, see how you like it and if you love it, well, it's going to be on sale for the rest of the year. We're, we're going to do a full sale for the rest of the year, 50% off. Uh, so make sure you go to djswivel.com and get that. All right. Without further ado, let's dig into it. Um, of course, you can see uh, the, the interface here. Uh, BDE stands for Big Distortion Engine uh, or whatever you like, really. Uh, and it is just that. It is a big distortion engine. Um, after releasing Spread, my stereo imaging plugin a few months ago, I really loved uh, designing that around sort of this central knob design. And so we did the same with BDE. This central knob is your drive function, and this is where you're going to get your distortion. Um, and then everything else around it sort of supports uh, and allows you to control where in the signal and how that distortion is being applied. Um, okay, so let's just do a full walkthrough. Uh, first things first, we have our preset window. Um, you can select uh, presets from a list of our factory presets here. You can create your own by you know dialing something in and just going save. Uh, very simple. We have an undo and a redo function. Uh, you can A, B. So let's say I uh, you know create a, a setting here that we like. All right, cool, we like that. Uh, and well, I wanna try another setting and, and AB them and see, see how well they work, uh, which one works better. So I'm gonna hit this button, which is copying over. So now A and B are the same. And now we can move A around uh, and make it a little bit different. And now you'll see, you can jump back and forth between A and B. Very simple, allows you to quickly try two different settings, see which one is better and, and move on. Um, and then of course, all your licensing and stuff is in here. All right, um, moving down, we have six different distortion styles um, and I named them uh, to be very clear how destructive they are. And so they start at the top with Nuke being the most destructive and all the way at the bottom here, Cherry Bomb being the least destructive and they sort of go in descending order. Um, and we'll get into that and you'll be able to hear uh, what each of them does and see, you know, which is the best style for you. Um, moving down uh, around this center drive knob, we have all of the other functionality and meters. Um, so I'll start here on the left. We have a simple mix knob here. Um, over here, we have a compressor and there's two settings, a soft and a hard setting. And with that compressor tied to it, uh, you can actually change whether you want the compressor to be pre which is before it hits the gain, the drive um, knob, or post, which means you're gonna compress the signal after the uh, distortion is, is applied, okay? Um, so uh, here we have a simple input and output, and this auto button allows the input and the output to have an inverse relationship. This means when you're setting the signal, uh, your optimal signal, uh, you're not actually changing the volume that you hear because you may have already mixed your, you know, kick drum or your bass uh, sound and you want to apply some distortion. You've already got the level right. You don't want to mess with that. So you make sure auto's on and it will uh, adjust accordingly so that you're not actually hearing any level change. Uh, but it does allow you to set the optimal volume 
uh, so that you can apply some distortion and right at, right away actually be able to hear it. Now, right next to auto is a detect function, which I'll show you in a minute, but what it does, very simple, you click detect, you press play on the sound that you're trying to distort, um, preferably around the loudest portion, uh, and then you turn it off, uh, and it'll automatically uh, jump up. It'll it'll level out your signal perfectly, so that uh, the moment you start going, uh, adding 0.1, 0.2 dB of drive, uh, you're going to start to hit that threshold and start to hear some distortion. Okay, um, we have some simple meters here. We have input meters and output meters. Uh, when you're in stereo mode, which is default, uh, it's simple left and right. You'll see a left and a right uh, meter bar. But we do have MS functionality. And if you turn MS on, uh, the left side of the input meter will be your middle signal, your mids. And the right side of the meter will be your sides. So everything, that, all the stereo information. Um, and with the MS, you have the ability to control. Right now, you're applying equal distortion to the mids and the sides. Uh, if you push it all the way to the sides, you know all the distortion will be applied to the sides. And if you push it all the way to the middle, uh, all the distortion will be applied to the middle. And of course, you have uh, control over how much and where. Um, and so this is really cool to give you some unique uh, stereo, uh, you know, some some stereo adjustment to your to your sound, uh, but distorted stereo adjustment. Um, okay, let's turn that off for a second. Uh, we have uh, down sampling here and we have bit crushing here. I wanted to make sure that we added complementary effects. And the whole idea of BDE is we want to we want you to be able to destroy your signal in the most beautiful way possible. And, uh, you know, having some bit crushing and down sampling is really helpful to give you some unique sounds there. OK, um, we have this range and speed slider, uh, which is one of the innovations that we came up with on this plugin, but I will get to that in a second because it's very, very special. It has to do with our dynamic preservation. Um, moving on, uh, we have an effects band here, and this allows you to apply the distortion only to whatever band is, is in between. So let's say you have a kick drum and you want to keep the lows uh, and you don't want to break them up with distortion. Well, you can just sort of filter this out um, this is not an EQ. Uh, this just is a essentially a, a bandpass allowing only the signal uh, that's between this to uh, to get passed through the distortion. And of course, uh, once you set it, you can grab the center and you know move it left and right so you can move them together. Um, okay, so that is the effects band. We have a color section, so we have a, a dark and a bright, um, and this is just a very simple. Uh, seesaw EQ, if you will, uh, just to quickly shape the sound uh, that you're working on. You may have added some distortion, which added a lot of like bright, high, sizzly stuff. So you might want to, you know, darken it up a little bit. Uh, or maybe you want to brighten it up a little bit. Maybe you want to make like a radio sound and you want it to be a little more, a little brighter. So you can do that. And then finally, on the output, we have a simple high and a low pass filter. Um, I love having a filter on a lot of plugins, to be honest, uh, because I constantly use filtering and it's just quicker. If you have a filter in the plugin, you've, you've got it there so you can create a really unique sound. And similar to the uh, effects band uh, feature, uh, you can just simply grab the uh, white stripe in the middle and move it around uh, anywhere you want. So if you want to dial in a nice like radio sound, you might like kind of do something like this. And okay, that's like a nice tight frequency and we'll just throw it right there and now you've got a radio sound. Um, so that is all of the features and uh, let me go through some of the sounds and then I will do a better job of explaining what range and speed do because it's a lot better if I uh, show you and let you hear it than me just trying to explain it because it is sort of a new thing uh, and I haven't seen it in another distortion. So. Let's, uh, let's go straight to the music, all right? So uh, the first example I wanna give is just how quickly you can dial in a sound. So I have an 808 here. Let's load up BDE. It's bypassed. And right now you're just gonna hear the 808 with nothing going on. Uh, but let, you know the way that we wanna use BDE is we wanna make sure that that 808 level is it's set to the optimal level, right? So the first thing you do when you load up BDE is you want to hit 
this detect button and you'll see it's flashing. This indicates that it's waiting to hear some audio. So now I'm going to play back the audio and then I'm going to turn detect off and you'll see what happens with the input and output slider. Okay, here we go. Cool. Turn it off and look at what it did. It uh, automatically put the input and output into auto mode uh, and it raised the input uh, 8.9 dB and lowered the output, you know, roughly the same 9 dB. Uh, and so you're not going to hear uh, any volume change at all. Uh, all this is doing is allowing you to set the alt, uh, the optimum volume that is going into the distortion. And so now we have a perfectly level signal. And the moment we go even 0.1 dB, you're going to start to hear some of that distortion subtly. And the more you go, uh, the more you're going to hear. Okay. So, uh, let's just mess around. I'm just going to play this sound back a few times. Why don't I loop it down a couple times? And, uh, and let's just hear, hear what that sounds like. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to run through all the different distortions and give you an idea of what each one sounds like. All right, here we go. So there you go. There's the six different distortion styles. They all have a unique characteristic. And like I mentioned before, they start from the most destructive and they work their way down to the least uh, destructive. So let's start with, uh, I like this grenade sound. Now, one thing you'll notice as I move this drive, you notice there was a blue section of the meter. What that blue section is, uh, that is showing you what portion of the signal is being distorted, right? So everything that is white is not being uh, affected by the distortion. It's not hitting the distortion. Everything above that, all the blue sections are hitting the distortion. And this is really useful when we dig into uh, range and speed. So you can kind of see uh, what portion of the signal is actually being affected. Um, Okay, so one of the amazing things, you know, I, especially with 808s, you know, I like to keep nice round uh, 808s. And so, you know, I don't want to distort the, these 20 hertz frequencies. So watch what happens when I raise this. You're going to get a clean low end and a nice distorted, um, you know, mid or upper section of the, the uh, uh, frequency spectrum. And so you could hear a little bit there, uh, you just messing with the mix knob a little bit, messing with the compressor a little bit, uh, just seeing what it does, uh, you know, changing the effects band, the, the, the filtering uh, and the color. Uh, and that allows you to just kind of see uh, what is possible with this plugin. Uh, so let me go to some other audio examples. Let's close that one. And let's move over here. Uh, so I've got this drum uh, section uh, drum loop really. Uh, and let's mute these vocals here and I'll mute the bass as well. And I'm just going to play this drum loop and I want you to hear what BDE is doing. And there's something really special going on, uh, specifically, uh, with the range and speed. And so, uh, let's just hear it and then I'll explain to you what's happening. Now let's hear without BDE.
So this drum loop is a very dynamic loop and it's got some uh, quieter hi-hat crash sounds uh, or open hi-hat sounds rather. Uh, and it's got the louder kick and snare. Uh, and so we wanted to try and affect the lower volume portions of the signal equally the same way that we're affecting the kick and snare. And so we use the range slider for that. So let me show you what range is doing. You notice when I lower the range, it increases the dynamic range of what is being distorted. This allows you to maintain um, the bounce and, and everything in your drums, for example, any sort of dynamic signal. Uh, it allows you to maintain the peaks and the valleys uh, while also applying the distortion effect. Whereas if I took the range off, as you heard, everything sounds louder. It just, everything gets louder, more distorted, more aggressive. And those hi-hats start to scream because they get so loud. And so this allows you to maintain those dynamics. And this is an innovation that no other distortion has. We are the only ones and it, it, it's amazing. I use this all the time. Uh, this is not going to be very useful for, you know, a signal that is not very dynamic. So for example, a, a baseline, uh, something that's that's smooth, like maybe a sine wave or, you know, some sort of synth that's like, you know, more of like a pad. Not going to be super helpful there. But on things like drum loops, vocals, uh, you know, anything that's very dynamic, maybe some plucky guitars or something like that, this is going to be really useful. Now, let me show you what speed is doing. And speed was actually a happy accident that we discovered as we were sort of building it. And I love the sound of it. And I was like, we have to keep that in the plugin. So speed changes uh, essentially the, the release time of, uh, you know, the distortion engine, uh, which is hang, you know, the distortion is basically hanging on to some of those uh, lower volume signal to apply distortion to it. And the speed allows you, you know, is the time in which the distortion will let go of that. And essentially what it does is in things like drum loops, you can get this really, uh, nice shuffle effect. And if you can get the speed to land right in the mill millisecond area of the tempo of your beat, and you have up to a hundred milliseconds of this, uh, you can get this really nice shuffle effect. So I'm just going to hit play and I want you guys to listen and hear what this speed uh, function is doing. So let's, let me turn it off first of all. So as you can hear, it gives you a nice shuffle sound. Now, the one thing that's worth mentioning with speed is it by turning speed on, it does add some latency to the uh, plugin. This is just the nature of how we uh, were able to build something like this. Uh, and so you're not going to be able to automate the speed, but uh, let me do an AB. You're going to hear some time uh, changing as I AB it, uh, but you're not going to hear that when you apply it to your, your signal at all. Um, which is why uh, we don't allow you to automate that feature. But let's uh, let's A B it again. I love that. The moment I heard that uh, nice shuffle sound that you can get, I was like, this is gonna be uh, incredible. And so I really, really, really love using uh, this speed and range slider for things like drum loops and, and vocals and things like that. Okay, so uh, that is how we use the range and speed. Uh, and that's, you know, just another example of how the distortion sounds on a, on a drum kit. And let me do one more AB just so you can hear uh, with nothing and then with BDE. Uh, 
I mean, I love this thing. It sounds so, so good. Okay. Uh, let's move on. So, uh, I've got a, uh, a bass sound here. And, um, yeah, let's just kind of hear, uh, exactly, uh, you know, what this bass sounds like without BDE and then I will, uh, turn it on. I mean, instantly you got a really, really cool aggressive sound. And there's some great presets in here. Let's let's hear what some of these sound like. So there's some really, really cool sounds that you can get out of this. Uh, all right, let's move on. I have, uh, it sounds really great on vocals. I've got a vocal here that uh, uh, is using BDE. Uh, let's hear what that sounds like. This is for more for some subtle saturation. Uh, so I think I've, yeah, did I, yeah, I've got it on the Molotov setting, which is the second lowest. Let's hear it without BDE. Feel so good, you never want to stray. Even if you wanted to, you never get away. Cause when babe, it's me and you, we're fucking up the place. No one does it like we do, we put it in their face. But there's so many do's and don'ts and what. I mean, sounds great. Gives a nice, really aggressive energy. Uh, and you always have control with this mix knob to, you know, lower the amount. Uh, of course, you can just like pull the drive back if it's a little too much. And you always have these filters so that you can only. Uh, apply distortion to the sections of the signal that you want. If you want a clean, crisp top end, cool. Just pull this down and you're only going to distort everything below, you know, 3,500 hertz here and everything above, you know, uh, 203. And of course, you can always move it around, dial in the sound that you want. It's very, very flexible. Um, okay, let's see what else we have. Um, I've got another uh, drum loop that I wanted to uh, show off. Uh, actually, you know what, before I show off the drum loop, cause that's similar to the other uh, uh, drum loop. Let's show this sub bass. Now I'm gonna bypass BDE for a second and let's just load it up so you can see what's happening, but it is bypassed right now. So you're not gonna hear BDE when I play it back, but there's a side chain on this bass, right? It's a very quick side chain. The kick is side chain to the bass and uh, and you'll he and you'll see that bass duck every time the kick hits. So watch. So every time you see that blue move down, uh, that's when the kick is hitting, and it, and you're getting that side chain ducking. Now, if I didn't have this range uh, slider here. Uh, you would basically lose that side chaining and you'd have to redo it. But with this range slider, we can maintain even that quick side chaining so that uh, you can apply the distortion without messing with the ducking that's going on with, with your side chain. So let me turn BDE on and have a listen for those, uh, those side chains, the ducking from the kick. And as you can see, BDE is the last thing in the signal chain. Normally, if you would put a distortion last thing and you raise the distortion by, you know, the drive by 8 dB, uh, you are going to change the dynamics of that signal and all of that, uh, that ducking that's going on is likely going to be lost. And so, uh, and what I'll do, let me raise the range and turn it off so you can hear what it sounds like without it. I mean, I have wanted something like this in a distortion forever uh, and nobody made it. So I made it myself. Um, 
so there you go. Uh, I, that's how it typically works. And, you know, I just love the sounds that you can get from this. Uh, so let me show you one more thing with these drums. And let's see if we can mess with some uh, MS stuff, just so you can hear kind of how to apply the signal in the center versus the sides. Uh, and, I'll, and I'll show you kind of what the uh, bit crushing and down sampling does. So let's just take four bars of this loop and load up BDE. And let's hear what we've got. You can get some really, really cool sounds with the bit crushing and down sampling, and let's mess with the MS a little bit. I mean, there you have it. You can really, really do so many cool things with this. Uh, it's the only distortion that I'm aware of that allows you to control every single aspect uh, of your audio signal. Uh, so I encourage you guys, go check it out. Uh, I've sort of walked through all the features. You guys understand what's going on, but I encourage you just go download. There's a free trial, go download it, mess with it. You got two weeks. Uh, if you love it, it's on sale till the end of the year. And uh, I think you guys are gonna have a ton of fun with this plugin. Uh, I've been using it on every single song that I mix, uh, every single uh, track that I make. I've been using it on, on 808s and, and basses and drums. Uh, it, it really is a versatile uh, uh, signal processor and I think you guys are gonna get so much use out of it. Uh, so that is just the tips for this week. Uh, please go check out BDE and I will see you guys in, uh, another, in I guess, two weeks. And I might have something special in two weeks for you as well. Uh, all right. Well, till next time, I am DJ Swivel. Make sure you like, subscribe, comment, do what you got to do. Uh, until next time, peace.